Hey, what's up, y'all? CP from Blue Eclipse Productions, and I'm back again. This video, I tentatively, if that's a word, I don't know, kind of tongue tied. But anyway, it's called Room Acoustics. Now, I mentioned a video of my previous video, or I mentioned something about it, but I didn't really go into detail because it's one of those things where, you know, depending on the type of approach you take, can either be beneficial or it can be very confusing um i'm more the kind of person where you know i'm gonna just give it to you in a very simple explanation and um you know i mean if you're looking for like a, a more of a complicated not complicated but if you all i'm gonna do is teach you the basics and if you want to supplement that by researching it further finding documents articles things of that nature or you know maybe if you're in college you want to ask your professor you know as, as far as like the physics of sound and you know all the details that it actually comes from because room acoustics is a derivative under the umbrella of sound acoustics so if you want to take it a step further by all means do it like I said I'm not really going I'm not really gonna go into that much detail but um you know it doesn't hurt in the long run the more you know the 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 better it'll be for you when you you know when you're treating different rooms and sizes and all the different things that I'm going to be talking about but this video is just basically aimed for you know the average person you know you're in a crib like say you're in like a, a house or an apartment you know you got a small room or not even really a small room maybe like a medium sized room or you know just basically you're not in a, a gigantic studio or a, a big room it's basically a small bedroom type setting so that's why I'm gonna explain it from that point of view um alright but let me see here how can I get started on explaining this where's that tool at if I can remember how to rock this like I said I'm kinda rusty with this paint thing alright let's go back to that room example so you got a room uh, shoot, yeah, now it's messing with me. Okay, you got a room. Boom, boom. And then I need that line tool. Okay. Alright, and then inside of this room, obviously, is your desk. And your two monitors. You know, and they got the nice little subwoofers and up. Oh, you know, it's not the round tool. Um, you got your bottom parts of the speakers. All right, but you know, you have your basic room set up, and um, this is basically the number one problem that happens with people who don't really understand room acoustics. Now, again. The basic definition of, of room acoustics is the study of sound behavior in a room. It's that simple. But like I said, it can be complicated to explain. But the easiest way to understand it is, think about it for a second. We're in this room. We're trying to mix. Now, this is after we've done what I was telling you to do in the first video, which is positioning the desk in the center of the room. You got your speakers in an equilateral triangle uh, listening spot so that way you're in the sweet spot and whatnot and um okay so you start uh, mixing two or three songs but you're not quite happy with the results and you're not really understanding why or matter of fact the number one thing that happens is a situation like this like say you're working on a bass line it sounds phenomenal in your room you know it's knocking it's vibrating it sounds incredible and then you take it out to the car and it's like, oh my God, where's the bass? Where did it go? You know? Or here's another situation. Like, say you're working on some reverb, and uh, you know it sounds really open and nice and lush when when it's in your room. But then when you take it out to the car, same thing. Or you take it to another studio or a boombox or someplace else, it sounds different. And the reason why is because even though you've got everything positioned correctly as far as listening to the music there's other things that are going on in the room that will affect your sound now I mentioned about comb filtering and uh, what else did I say it was ah, I can't remember but no but I mean basically what happens is let me see if I can find a good color to explain let me try orange 
Okay. Now I know um, sound waves are a a spherical phenomenon, meaning like it's a circular explosion of energy, and the molecules move around the room. That's the complicated way of saying it. All right, a better way of explaining it is like this. Like, let's just say, like I said, you have a sound. It ricochets around the room. In certain cases, the sound will do, like, let's just say you're in a room and the sound is doing this. It comes from the speaker. It bounces off the wall, bounces off the rear wall, if you can use your imagination, and it comes right back to you. Like, say you're here, you're listening, you're jamming, you're in your little office chair. Sorry about my little crew drawing, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, the sound will actually come back over to where you're sitting, and it can either increase the frequency in decibel, or it can decrease, like it can cancel itself out. Now, obviously, if it cancels itself out, or if it brings down the decibels, what's the first thing you're going to want to do when you're mixing? Oh man, well, if, I mean, why I can't really hear it over here? Well, shoot, let me go on ahead and, and EQ it and boost it, you know. And I know I'm skipping ahead of topic because some of y'all may may never have heard it of EQ boosting and cutting and whatnot. That'll be explained in a separate video. But for the people that have already been mixing, like I said, to try to remedy the problem, you start boosting the EQ, right? But again, you take it back, you know, to the car, different speakers, different setup. And then now, all of a sudden, that bass that you couldn't hear is just extremely loud and muddy, and it's messing everything up, you know? Or, say you got another situation, like the sound is uh, coming from the speaker and bouncing back, and it's making it uh, louder than the bass really is. So, you decide, okay, let me grab the EQ, let me cut from that, uh, you know, lower bass region, and then... Like I said, now you have no baseline on most people's setups because, you know, you were thinking under the impression of your room that, hey, in order for me to fix this problem, I need to get some EQ or I need to grab this tool or that tool. Or like I said, you get on a message board, you're mad, you're frustrated. Dude, how can I solve this problem? All right, so let's take it a step back. If you want to solve the problem, this is where you need to understand room acoustics and sound reinforcement when you know about the sound reinforcement there's little techniques that you can do to help prevent the sound from being out of control like for example um let me grab my tool again what you can do as an alternative to fix the problem especially with bass is a little contraption called a bass trap a bass trap is basically something that literally per, like absorbs the bass sound. It tries to trap it so the sound doesn't bounce all over the place and mess you up when you're trying to mix. So, like for example, usually a bass trap will be set up like in the corner like this. Boom. And then over here. Boom. You know? And what will... Oh. I didn't mean to mix up my colors. Let me redraw that one more time. But I want it to be brown. But um, what will happen in this situation with the bass traps is, like I said, it will help absorb the bass when it gets into the different parts of the room. So instead of the sound bouncing all over the place and coming back and messing you up, the sound can basically go here, and that's the end of the road. Or it will at least suppress it to where... You're back here, you're mixing, having a good time, like I said, you're in your chair, and that bass is not coming back into the flow of the speaker sound, in, in you know, from the original source. It's not adding dB or taking away dP or, or introducing problems. You're getting the sound without interruptions from the rest of the room. And this happens not only with bass, it can happen with mid-range frequencies, high-range frequencies, and... It could be something as simple as that where had your room been treated, you wouldn't have made the choices that you made with mixing the song. So that's why I'm stressing the importance of understanding room acoustics so that way you can use bass traps and you can use 
broadband absorbers and to explain a broadband absorber is just it's similar to a bass trap except instead of focusing solely on the bass region a broadband absorber tries to capture all the broad all of the you know the ranges of sound usually mid-range and high range and a little bit of the low end but not as low as a bass trap but you know you want to use bass traps to get the you know the low end you want to get broadband absorbers to try to take care of the mid-range and the high range and actually depending on the size of your room there's actually another tool called a diffuser which is it's uh it's kind of like a broadband absorber but it doesn't actually absorb the sound it actually redirects the sound away from your ear meaning like you usually put a broadband absorber i'm sorry a diffuser like say in the back wall right here and then if the sound comes to this back wall with a diffuser is that it'll point the sound into other directions until the energy dies instead of letting the sound come directly back to you because like i said the same way the sound can come and bounce back without bass traps it can also bounce back behind your ear if you don't have a diffuser set up but that diffuser is a little more complicated depends on if you're in a big room a small room and whatever's going on but usually you can get away without having a diffuser all you need are bass traps and broadband absorbers and as a matter of fact i'm gonna pick up the camera i don't really like to show off my room too much man and my setup but I mean, it's better if you see it physically in action, and then, you know what I'm saying, you can compare for yourself and whatnot. So let me go ahead and pick up this camera. All right, so yo, this right here is uh, one corner of my room, and this long upholstered fabric little device right here is basically my broadband absorber, you know what I'm saying? Now, the reason why I got a gap right here is because, I mean, shit, I got nine-foot ceilings, didn't really anticipate that two eight-footers would leave such a massive gap, but, you know, like I said, it gets the job done, you know what I'm saying? It's built by me. I got my Bob Vila on. I used some wood. I used some materials. Built it myself. Hung it up, you know what I'm saying, with some S-hooks and some wire, and boom, and I'm good to go. And if we scan over here, you know what I'm saying, got another one over here in front of my microphone stand and my keyboard. You know what I'm saying? Two right there. And then this look, this ugly shit right here is basically my booth. But, you know what I'm saying? That shit worked, dog. Like, and I'll probably explain that in another video. And if we go all the way over here, you know what I'm saying? Now, this right here is another one of my bass traps just in a different fabric. You know what I'm saying? Because these over here, I got them one day in this color. So, I got these over here in a different color. You know, I may try to match up the fabrics later on, but that's basically how it is right now. You know what I'm saying? And again, it gets the job done. And then if we could look over here. Now, I don't really have this position too well. I mean, I was basically rushing and testing this out. But this is an example of my broadband absorber. And I'm actually trying to use it um, to absorb sounds when they come up to that corner of the wall. Um, and ideally, probably in the future when I, you know, get around and get my Bob Vila on again, you know what I'm saying? I'll probably put another one up over here somewhere, or maybe a little bit of diffusion, not diffusion, but another one over there. And it just depends, you know what I'm saying? However I can get my sound to improve, you know, I'll think of different ways. Like, see, I got another one over here, you know what I'm saying? I got this one over here in this corner, you know? all the way over here now this is this is like one of those things where i just ain't really know what to do man because like this room doesn't have four corners like these corners it's basically like just an open gap because of two doors you know what i'm saying and that happens a lot too but i figure hey you know it's better than nothing you know what i'm saying through a broadband up there with some s hooks you know what i'm saying hopefully that'll absorb a little bit of sound i may consider put another one over here but nonetheless, dog, like I said, I ain't trying to give you a tour of my motherfucking crib. I'm just telling y'all, you know what I'm saying, I go hard on my shit, and, and that's how I did my setup. So let me get back to the computer screen, let y'all in on some more diagrams. If you got any trouble, any questions, please hit me up, cp at blueeclipsepro.com, you know what I'm saying, or, um, like I said, I'll provide some links in the description box of this video.